Hello my soccer universe, welcome to the review of what was happening in the Premier League over the past two weeks, yeah two weeks, I missed last weekend because I, yeah, for some reason I wanted to do it and then I thought yeah let's put the Crystal Palace Leeds United game and then I never got to it, but um, the way things are going and yes I'm shooting, I'm aware I'm shooting on Monday before uh, United are playing Brentford but I have uh, decided that for the rest of the season I need to make weekly updates on the Premier League because uh, all crucial races are very much open and every week and with all the makeup games thrown in every week something else can change. There's so many twists and turns. We have of course the title race but I think this is... Uh, I. It has everything 1819 written all over. Was it 18, 19, yeah, 18, 19, written all over that they all going to win out and City is going to win the title. Uh, but it is at least exciting. Um, then you have the top four race, which uh, last time, time around, uh, potentially there could have been a three-way race, but it was already more two-way race. Uh, that was that even now it swung towards Arsenal uh, in many ways. Also due to scheduling. Uh, and then uh, we have uh, the relegation battle where I actually pre pre predicted that uh, by the time the next time we see each other, Everton is probably down. But Everton is not without hope. They got a big win. And uh, while I think Burnley is probably safe, it's not Leeds United that you look at and think, hmm, is this... Is this now the, 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 the team that is going to falter late? Um, to me, or I mean, I can tell you right, right away from my stats, of everything that's happened since last time, the team that had the biggest change in the expected points is Burnley, but then followed by Arsenal and then followed by Everton. And that includes a derby loss, but the derby loss was kind of expected. Uh, I know this will be probably a longer video, video so let's run through it. I mean, um, the biggest game of last weekend was definitely Arsenal against Manchester United. This was the last chance for United and this was a pre-running go to Austria uh, <laughs> United where yes uh, I've made a video on that already. Uh, I am personally very excited. I'm not so happy that you know with the um, uh, advisor role at United but that was kind of key to him getting to Austria and I can totally see that uh, United uh, supporters cannot really see that either, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, let's see how much he will be in that advisory role. I actually think that he will get the advisory role, he will get paid off uh, to uh, gain some extra money and United don't have to, you know, because they have probably been some contract signed and blah, 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 and he will uh, instead of getting some dead money, he will have something going there. However, that game was such a weird one where uh, you, it really seemed that everything was going Arsenal way. There were many penalty calls that could go, have gone either way. Also has to has, has to say. I think that especially the second one, uh, the soccer pen pen penalty, is one of those where I understand why it is given, but it, it just doesn't sit right with me because I think uh, he's falling down and the ball hits him or something, something like that. So it, it, it was it was kind, 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 kind of weird. But then Cristiano Ronaldo pulls um, United back in the game, and then from that moment on, United suddenly start, uh, suddenly start to control the game. Uh, and even get a penalty themselves, but Bruno Fernandes puts it on to, uh, was, 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 was it to the side of the goal? I think he he, the, he doesn't even pull it on target. And at that point, if he makes it 2-2, I think United are going to go on to win this game. And then I think United will maybe even pick up some momentum to really get back into this top four fight. However, it is then Arsenal who get the win uh, with a uh, Shaka. A brilliant shot from out, uh, from uh, way outside, but also has to as we said there probably was an offside kinda in there as well. So while it seemed like in the end it was a clear win for Arsenal, I think United very well could have gotten something out of this game and were rather unlucky. Um, other games of note, uh, Manchester City 5-1 uh, win over Watford, as they always do. It's always uh, uh, around Gabriel Jesus scoring four. I just want to mention this was one of the most asinine and horrible jersey matchups that I have to say. I think 
what would could have well played in yellow there and it would have looked fine but this greenish against the uh, uh, light blue of city it just didn't sit uh, well with me. Uh, I actually, yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I regret to tell you that I watched Brentford against Spurs. Pff, it was a tough watch. Spurs for a second game in a row, uh, not putting a shot on target. Uh, Brentford actually having the better chances. It could have been Ericsson who, 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 who could have scored one. But I also have to say that I always had the feeling that the Spurs controls the game, but they cannot break down the defense. And I was so... What Brighton showed before is kind of the recipe. This is how you uh, can put a limit on Spurs. And they couldn't find a breakthrough. Uh, very late on, there was an acrobatic cane chance. I think this was the best chance of the game. Uh, but to, to be honest, when I look, look, look at the clear-cut chances, it's Brentford that should have won uh, that one for sure. And Brentford, yeah, part Ericsson, part getting a uh, turnaround, really uh, looking safe-ish now. Uh, there's a 2-2 in a South Coast derby, of course. Burnley with a big win over Wolves. I actually saw a little bit of that one as well. Uh, that was a win that no one really expected. And no one, actually, after Sean Dyche got sacked, expected really for Burnley to uh, do anything there. But no, Vidura gives them the 1-0 and kind of started this uh, climb out of the relegation zone. Uh, I'm putting already a lot of pressure on Everton, who had the big derby uh, c c uh, coming up. Uh, Chelsea, West Ham, a uh, game to forget. Uh, except, you know, I think one of the worst penalties taken in there as well by Jorginho. Uh, but then Pulisic gets the uh, the goal, uh, make it 1-0. But uh, definitely, Chelsea's season is more or less over. It's going sideways. Uh, Tuchel is having personal problems. The sale is not going through. You know, it's just going flat. Uh, and West Ham, it's Europa League or bust at the moment because that's a surefire way to get into the Champions League. Uh, otherwise, it seems like it will be Conference League for them. Sounds a little bit like Villarreal last season, huh? Don't, don't, don't you get Pulisic getting the goal. And, you know, uh, I also think that his time at Chelsea might well be over at this point because uh, while he's one of their most talented players, he never really makes an impact there. I think he will probably be better uh, off at an R club. As so many, I think if the sale goes through, Chelsea's in for a revamp uh, on all fronts. Liverpool against Everton. Um, Everton fought bravely. But I have to say, uh, the pure defensive tactics and not uh, showing up to play, uh, that was in the end their undoing. It was basically a war of attrition where, yes, Everton had a few chances, maybe uh, a few decisions could have gone their way. But if I look at the overall performance, uh, they did not want to play. And I understand why. Liverpool is that much better. And then, of course, Origi soon to be at Milan, probably come, 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 come comes on, and then uh, the game really um, to switches over. Salah going through, uh, Robertson pulls the ball in, and then a little bit later, uh, or Origi, not a little bit later, late in the game, Origi gets uh, the 2-0, sets Liverpool on course. So there was a whole lot of pressure, because Liverpool needed to keep up with City and Everton, uh, needed to keep up with Burnley, and so it was Everton uh, on the short end of that straw. And crucially, um, with only two goal win and Manchester City have a four goal win, the gap in the goal difference also closing at the moment. And it may, I don't think it will, but it may come down to goal difference there. So that's another thing that we have to look at in this title, title is where Liverpool for most of the time look good. Um, then, during, during, during the midweek, I uh, already uh, pulled forward because of the FA Cup final from uh, round 37. Uh, United playing Chelsea and no one is talking talk about it. A goal by Alonso and a goal by Ronaldo. That's that. I think it was the least interesting United-Chelsea game in ages. Which uh, tells you a whole lot where both clubs are going. United season is more or less over. As is Chelsea's, uh, there is not much movement up or down. United most likely will go into Europa League. Chelsea is more or less safe in the Champions League. So, and there's really not much to play play for. And the clubs are a little bit in turmoil as well. Uh, so, round 37 is, of course, come coming up uh, much, much later, uh, uh, way more. But now, round 30, 35, um, a potential banana skin for Liverpool didn't prove to be one. Uh, the only banana skin that it could have proved is that uh, the scoreline was way too low. 
Liverpool shot have won by two or three at Newcastle. And it was even early kickoff, where given that Liverpool played on Wednesday night, uh, I, I didn't hear many com com complaints from Klopp, but this would have been a typical Klopp uh, complain uh, side there. So yeah, but I mean, especially the one by Salah around the 66, I mean, no, not Salah, uh, Sané, Mane. Salah, Mane, Sané, Salah, Salah is not even playing in Germany. I always get those com com confused. It should have been a surefire goal. Um, I also have to say that in the build-up to the 1-0, one, one there was a little bit of a rough challenge in there. They probably could have gone the other way, but overall, overall a thoroughly deserved 1-0. Um, Burnley, another, and shows the resilience of, of theirs. A 2-1 win at, at, at Watford, although they have been down in 8 minutes through an own goal, uh, you know, coming off the crossbar and then uh, it hits uh, Tarkovsky and the goals goes in it. But in the last 10, 10 minutes, they turned around through Cork and Brownhill. And I have to say, these are probably the goals uh, that give, it's not, they are not safe yet by any means. But actually, this might give them enough momentum going forward because also their uh, upcome, their, their schedule of the upcoming games doesn't look all that bad for them, and, and they have a fight in them. Um, I had my eyes also on Leeds United against Manchester City. Great choreography, Yorkshire and so on up there, um, but that backfired quickly because all the paper needs to go somewhere and it went on to feel it went on all the city players all the time and i even loved love love the man at the corn corn kick there were even boys coming yeah let's throw it and then and, and and then the security guy catching the ball out, out, out of, yeah come on come on <laughs> please um rodrigo had a huge chance right or early on where he intercepted i think it was Cancelo who fell, fell over he gets the ball in the midway line can run clear on goal and i don't know why he has a, he's not drifting towards goal he's running straight 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 and in meanwhile there are many defenders and he could have he could have even had the chance to play to um attack and a running neck next to him but he doesn't do it and then something it should have been probably at least a shot shot on the goal is fizzles out to nothing and I still don't understand. He gets the ball and then he runs parallel to the touchline instead of moving towards goal. It was such a weird, weird, weird uh, attack. As soon as Rotary made it 1-0 um, after a corner, I really thought there was not really a way back. Yes, Leeds in the, uh, early, uh, late in the first half probably had a little bit of control of the game, but that was put to rest as soon as Nathan Ake... <laughs> in another sense, and Rafana makes it 2-0 for, for, for City. And then it becomes a rout uh, with Gabriel Jesus making it 3 and Fernandinho 4. And suddenly, Liverpool, no, not going to go, they are level on goal difference, as we'll see. So uh, even that is not going to City's favor. Um, and I told you, I think uh, City will probably win this title. And they may, they may even go on to win the Champions League and Liverpool will be left with the two, other, two uh, more minor cup trophies in uh, many ways. Then we had a huge win. I didn't watch it because Milan was the same. Season, but it's also a huge win for Everton over Chelsea. Now, it was probably the best time ever to play Chelsea, but Chelsea had a lot of empty possession. Uh, they created a few, few chances, but John Pickford really, really showed up that day and kept uh, kept Everton in there. And uh, then Everton actually did score on uh, um, uh, er an early error uh, from the Everton defense. Uh, and Richarlison, after a great assist, makes it 1-0 right after the halftime. It's another one of those wins that are absolutely crucial. And I still have the feeling, to me, Everton is not a team that should get relegated. And it's because they're getting... Yes, they played United at the right time. They played Chelsea at the right time. They dug in deep. Uh, you know, everything. It's not pretty in any way. But they're getting their results. But I think they're getting not enough results. And that loss to Burnley could play the, pay dividends. Negative ones. Um... In the top four race, Spurs putting a whole lot of pressure on Arsenal by beating Leicester City 3-1 with Kane and Son uh, being their normal selves. Kane with the first shot and goal. Yes, that was the first shot in over two games. 
uh, for Spurs, making it 1-0 in 20 seconds and, so, and Son scoring two, and especially the third one was a brilliant goal. Leicester, very much Conference League mode, uh, having to play Roma, uh, didn't look all that fresh. And yeah, the, all their eggs are in the Conference League basket. And then I was actually hoping for a little trip up of Arsenal just to keep it more exciting because I know that with the win Spurs, they have the better goal difference, but they also have, have a game at Liverpool coming up. Uh, and yes, then if they don't get anything out of there, and very likely they will not, although this could be, as we'll see, the one of the bigger fixtures, then the North London Derby is not much to play for. But at, as it stands, I think in the North London Derby, if Arsenal would uh, not have the win at West Ham, uh, a draw for Arsenal will be enough. And that's not something I want to have that, that both teams have a whole lot to play for there. But um, the game was, you know, it took a whole lot of time to get going. And then uh, Holding heads one in, Bowen gets an equalizer from a deflection. And then just when uh, West Ham uh, kind of seemed to be the bad, better team, Gab Gab Gabriel heads it in to make it 2-1 and then Arsenal didn't have too many troubles playing that one home. So it was kind of a routine win for Arsenal in many, many ways. And yeah, uh, they are in pole position now for this top four, uh, for the top four uh, spot. And as I said, the North London Derby will probably seal the deal, but we have a round before that. We'll talk about it in a second. So at this very moment, we have, now let's, let's look at all the races. We have, of course, City a point ahead of Liverpool. Goal difference, absolute level. Liverpool still slightly better because they have a goal more scored. But that might also go this way. And uh, the last times I made, they were a little bit, bit closer. Now, you know, the less games are left, the more it will go City's direction. And so it's now 60-40 for uh, in favor of City. Top four race, it's between Arsenal and Spurs. All the others there is, you know, it seems United probably going to Europa League, West Ham will in the Conference League. And that's base Bay, basically. I know if uh, Leicester should win the Conference League and West Ham should win the Euro Europa League, then uh, even ninth spot could get you in. But let's see how this will turn out. Um, I don't actually think so. Because we are real didn't get the spot either, so um, I don't think now you only can get seven, at most seven teams into in, in Europe. I have been saying something, something stupid, but at, at at the moment, especially since Spurs will have to go to Liverpool, it's seventy percent Arsenal in Arsenal's favor. So uh, if it would have been if Arsenal would have gotten that win at West Ham, it would be much more in favor of uh, and, you know it would be much more level in that way. Broad midfield, anyone can end up anywhere, uh, more or less the way it stands. Um, Crystal Palace does the relegation zone, but looks, I would say, all right. But then Burnley, only now 20, 20, 20, 20, 20%, Leeds United, 40%, with a tough schedule come, coming up, and Everton, 39%. It is Leeds United then uh, at, the, at the moment, I'm worried. And again, uh, Neither of these teams should be in that position. Let's be honest with that. Everton have a game against Crystal Palace in hand. If they would win that one, they're level with Crystal Palace. So that's also a huge one. And then maybe suddenly Crystal Palace is full in, in, in the ranks. So they're also not quite safe. But I think at the moment you look, and especially if you look at uh, the final schedule, it seems to come down to Leeds United and Everton for the final spot going down. And that's why we will have a video after the uh, round that's coming that, 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 that come up, where we have Burnley, Aston Villa, uh, probably a game that Burnley uh, will win. Um, Crystal Palace, Watford must be a win. If you see the situation, it must be a win for them. Uh, we have Liverpool against Spurs, a huge game with implications going both ways. This is an absolute must watch. Arsenal leads United. Leeds United will fight tooth and nails there. We have Leicester coming off the Europa League playing against Everton. That could play in Everton's favor, to be honest. And then we have late uh, City against Newcastle, uh, which I thought could have been also a banana skin, but Newcastle didn't do anything against Liverpool. I don't think they will do anything against City as well. So yeah, there you go. This is my 
a uh, review of what was happening over the past two weeks. As I said, I will do my best now to go uh, on a weekly basis uh, through the Premier League because there are so many things happening and things are changing almost weekly. There's also an FA Cup final coming up very soon. So loads to talk, loads to talk there. Any case, please let me know what you thought about what's happening um, uh, in these uh, two weeks uh, where you think uh, things might end up. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might actually enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell. So in order to get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe.